these are video tips from Mrs. Clopper. Well, not really. I actually read this book, How to Shoot Video That Doesn't Suck, and it had awesome tips in it. So um, it's written by Steve Stockman. He provided 12 tips, but I narrowed them down to 10 for us, and I also embellished a few of them. Tip number one is think in shots. So when you were in multimedia or video and digital production, um, you learn the different shots and angles. You had your shots and angles project. Uh, it was the first one you completed most likely, and you probably remember it to this day. So remember that you can only look where the camera looks. Um, and a lot of directors do this um, so that people don't get bored. And so don't get bored while you're shooting by keeping the camera static. Think in shots. And um, Steve also, he also recommended that you shoot deliberately. deliberately. Who are you shooting? What are you shooting? Shoot things that are interesting to you and to your viewer. So pre-production brainstorming, um, make a list of all of your ideas, even the wacky ones, the wackiest of wackiest. Um, maybe even have a brainstorming list that you keep um, and you keep forever, who knows, um, if you'll meld those ideas together. But at this point, um, you would want to mark all your interesting ideas and then narrow them down to the ones that you really like, that you would enjoy filming. Um, also consider when you're brainstorming or when you narrow down to that particular um, idea that you have, who your audience is, who's your competition, if you are, you know, a superstar director, movie director, movie producer, who's your competition. Um, maybe you want to be a famous vlogger or um, blogger or Instagrammer. So who's your competition? What does the audience want? Where are most people going to see your video? Why use video? Is there another platform that you could use um, that would work better than video? Tip number two, don't shoot till you see the whites of their eyes. People communicate with their eyes and their mouth. Um, so Steve recommended that you focus on the eyes. Um, maybe at some point you may want to focus on the mouth, but zooming in um, an extreme close up on the eyes or facial features really helps viewers capture the emotion um, that the actor or actress is trying to portray. Now, you have to have a good actor or actress in order to do this, which we may be lacking sometimes. However, but if you're filming a surprise party, um, if you're filming a family event, a sporting event, you might want to get in there as close as you can to see the expression of your subject. Storyboarding. So in pre-production you will be storyboarding. Um, make sure you storyboard what the shot is about. And, and this was a tip that Steve gave that I found quite interesting. He said consider using your camera or in our case your iPad to storyboard. So actually go to the location you don't need your actor or actress at that time, but you can definitely take shots of um, your scenes to get an idea. It would be also ideal for your actors or actresses to have that in advance so that they would be aware of what they're, what they're going to do. Your script. Also in pre-production, um, you should have a list of scenes, of course, with dialogue. Um, you may want to consider a table read. 
So the actors or actresses, even brother, sister, mom, dad, aunts, grandma, grandpa, um, taking on a character and reading your script. That way you can eliminate repetition, find mistakes, and fix them before the actual actors or actresses um, take on the role. Tip number three, keep your shots under 10 seconds. Most directors do this. Um, there are some that break the rules, but shots are under 10 seconds. It makes an impact, it grabs our attention, we don't get bored. The next time you watch a show or a movie, take notice that how often they switch camera angles, camera shots. Um, so it should be under 10 seconds. So speaking of shots, your story. Um, each video that you shoot has a story, whether you think about it or not. The hero is the who. Um, you might not think of your actor or actress as necessarily a hero, um, but it's your subject. Of course, there should be a beginning, a middle, and an end. And when considering the end, do you want resolution in your film, or do you want to have drama, a cliffhanger, um, the audience wanting more, that kind of thing. Tip number four, zoom with your feet. Um, so this is kind of opposite of what we you probably have done in the past. You probably have used our cameras with those nice lenses to zoom in. But when you zoom in with a camera lens, um, that, especially ours, because they're not real smooth, we don't have $30,000 cameras that have nice smooth zooms, but any movement of the camera creates an even larger movement on the screen. So it's, it's better if you walk up to get that shot. Um, lens zoom also reduces quality of the image on the screen. The computer um, in the camera, they blow up the picture, reducing the quality. If you do use a lens um, to zoom, be sure to use a tripod when you can. That will greatly diminish any camera movement that you have. Most of you probably know this, but keep the light behind you. This image here is a poor example of the light being behind the subject. The, the subject will appear dark. Now, if you're going for that look, yes, you can break this rule or tip. But nine times out of 10, you don't want your subject to be black, dark. So you should keep the light behind you. Tip number six, focus on what really interests you. Find a subject to focus on, um, whether it be a, per a person or a certain angle. Um, consider adding foreground elements um, to your films. Those are objects that are actually in front of um, your subject. It may give your shot more dimension uh, and it adds space to your shot. So if the person's sitting at a table, you might wanna add a place setting, dishes, a meal, flowers. Um, maybe it's as simple as a cell phone, a book, um, just to give your, your shot a little more dimension. Now, um, Steve also recommends and I put this as tip number seven, to don't use amateurish titles. Keep your title short and simple. Place at the top or bottom third of the frame is what he suggests. Um, use white over dark backgrounds and light over black or dark um, backgrounds. 
Do not use any fancy fonts. So no shadows, no outline, no underline, no motion glow. Of course, unless um, this goes with your film or maybe you're doing it as a joke, um, as part of your video, that would be fine when you could break this rule. Um, but one of the most important tips in this slide is to keep keep your title on the frame a beat longer than you can read it aloud. So literally read your title aloud and keep it a beat longer and then move to your first scene. Tip number eight, keep your video short, okay? Most of our videos um, in multimedia, video, digital production are short. Um, we're not shooting three-hour movies here. But always keep the audience wanting more. And if commercials can do it in 30 seconds to a minute, you probably can too. When you have all of your shots, um, your editing and premiere, when in doubt, if that does not contribute, that particular shot does not contribute to your film, cut it out. If it doesn't contribute to the storyline, cut it out, which is a great segue into the rule of less. So, the rule of less, according to Steve Stockman, who made up the rule of less, everything in the finished video has to be good and has to be there for a reason. If not, cut it out. Transitions when you're in post-production. Um, if there, you cut a scene into the next scene, and it jars you, it's really sudden, jerky, cut it out, okay? There are three kinds of transitions. Um, there's the cut when you're going from one shot to the next in one frame. It can be invisible um, if it cuts between angles in a scene or like a shocking scene if someone's murdered or something like that. Um, there's the wipe transition when a new scene moves in from one side of the screen. And then there's a dissolve, the slow fade from one screen to a next. Now, in Premiere, you will see all the fancy stuff. The flip. Um, and you can do the flip in different types of shapes. And they have a bazillion different transitions. If you're doing a nice film, you should not have those fancy transitions in your film. You should keep it nice, clean, and simple. You don't see a, a wipe um, from one corner to the next in a Martin Scorsese film. Okay, You just don't see that. Maybe in a Quentin Tarantino film. Um, but not in a Martin Scorsese. Of course, you can break the rules again, but make sure that there's a purpose for you breaking the rule. Tip number nine, use an external microphone. We have those nice Rode microphones. Actually, the one pictured there below is a little more ancient than ours. Um, most cameras adjust their own sound, so... Um, yeah, our cameras do a good job, but again, this is an upper level class, so you should use an external microphone, not just the camera. We have the boom so that you can put the road mic on a boom and have someone hold it for you. We have lapel mics. You can attach the road mic to the camera. We also have the snowball mics and a few other mics where if you want to do a voiceover for your film, you should certainly use that. You also have more control with an external mic um, rather than the mic on your camera. 
Um, and use a slate, also known as the clapper, to sync sounds. You can also just use your hands to do a clap. Um, if I do have a clapper now, but if you don't have a clapper on location, then you should use your hands. So where would a clapper come into play? Well, believe it or not, on real movie sets, movie cameras don't record sound. The sound is always recorded separately um, with a whole sound system. So that noise of the clapper allows the sound editor to sync the clap with the frame of the film in which the clapper closes. And then you can sync all your audio to that. Um, if you are using two cameras for filming, you definitely want to use the clapper method. You should choose one camera to record the sound along with the video, and then the other camera you can just delete the sound in post-production. So one of the cameras should be responsible for audio. And that is where you need to use a clapper or clap your visibly clap your hands on camera so you can sync up the sound with the number two camera. Tip number 10. Um, is the quality pledge. And I put this in here because, um, yeah, it's cheesy, but it's also reflective of your work. Um, you know, just maybe take a look at this every now and then. You know, you promise not to inflict lame, a lame video on your friends, relatives, customers, or complete strangers who might find it on YouTube. You promise that you'll always keep the microphone close to the people talking or use an external mic if you're too far away. If the picture's too dark to see, don't use it. If your thumb is in front of the lens, don't use it. Unless you use footage of a one in a lifetime thing, you promise not to keep jerky, hard to follow video entirely, or you promise to keep it to yourself and not share it with others. Um, you conform to a higher technical standard, realizing that making someone watch a bad video is disrespectful. In most cases, they would chew off their leg to get away from it. Um, and that technical problem will keep them from appreciating the funny, cute, beneficial, talented, shocking thing that you're trying to share with them. And then lastly, in short, you pledge to think about how to make quality video for your audience um, at the same time as thinking about getting your point across. You won't make anyone watch anything that is so crappy looking that you wouldn't watch it if someone voluntarily handed it to you. So if you wouldn't watch it, don't make it. And that's all the tips I have for you. Um, so I would recommend if you um, are thinking about going into video as a career, you actually purchase the book or borrow my copy. I found it very interesting. He has um, a lot of examples in there and it's, it was just really valuable. Um, so now that I have imparted this wisdom on you, there will be a project. <laughs>